everyone. I'm here with Sean. He Or, yeah, did, yeah. We're on. Oh. Just jumped immediately to us. We're, what happened to our setup break? <laughs> All I right, I guess, I guess we're on then. Hi. Can uh, everyone hear us? Just let's get a sound check. Yeah, make sure let's, get that, a, uh, let's make sure that we can hear. I popped out the chat. I popped out the chat. People hear us? Let us know, chat. It is okay, toasty in front of that good. fire. Okay, great. I know, in the same room. I can actually okay. reach over and poke him. Ow, don't do that. <laughs> okay, well, uh, hi, I I'm Justin. And I'm David. And together we are the co-founders of Codename Entertainment. Until we're not. Well, that, that's the wrong script, Dave. Oops. That's Dev Insights. Shoot. Uh, but it, it says it right there. Oh, yeah, whoops. Anyway, welcome to Codename Entertainment's 24-hour Extra Life live stream. For the next 24 hours, we'll be bringing you uh, various games and entertainment, care of Codename's dedicated staff. And all the money that we raise today is going to BC Children's Hospital. And BC Children's Hospital, if you just watched the interview, helps sick kids uh, in BC and British Columbia and the region uh, get better. And it's, uh, it's really impacted the lives of a lot of people here at Codename as well. And so this is our eighth year running this. And over the, or is it our eighth year or ninth year? No, it's our eighth year. But over it's the past seven year. years, yeah. uh, we've raised over eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars for BC Children's Hospital, and this year we're hoping to break the hundred thousand mark. In, in I, fact, I think, I think, I think, think we, we already, already did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've yeah. raised uh, over twelve thousand uh, dollars already. So that's that's amazing. Um, so uh, if you want to help out, uh, you can check out our Extra Life page. There's uh, there's some things you can donate to there for the streams that are happening today. And there are uh, some things you can buy in our games to, uh, to help out. And all the proceeds from those purchases will go towards uh, BC Children's Hospital. Yeah, and for our first segment, it's a Founders Q&A, so you can, uh, we're going to take some time to answer questions uh, about Codename Entertain, about uh, Justin, about myself, about our games. Uh, it really, it's an AMA, so ask us anything. Yeah. Uh, Dave and I ha host a, a weekly segment on this channel called uh, Developer Insights, where we generally answer questions about idle champions. Uh, but if you, uh, if you have questions about other things, uh, we'd love to answer those in this one. Um, and if not, then I guess we'll just answer Idle Champions questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so let's just get to it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Do we have any questions? We do. We have one. The first question has come in, and it is, where is the site that you can donate on? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, if you look in chat there, the exclamation mark Extra Life uh, has a link to our Extra Life page. You can go there and check it out. I'll go there and check it out Does myself. It work? See what it looks like. Extra. Life. Yes, and uh, and you can scroll down, and you can see the schedule for the day. Um, there are some links in that schedule where you can see more um, specific things about how you can contribute to those shows, and uh, and then of course if you play any of our games, if you play Bushwhacker Two or uh, Crusaders of the Lost Idols or Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, uh, you can log into those, and there is special Extra Life DLC. Um, I think the one in. Uh, Idle Champions is a displacer kitty. Uh, very cute, familiar. Yes. Yeah, so uh, that will help you click and level things up. I've been watching Ivy work on the key art for that for weeks now. Yes. Uh, it looks really excellent. Amazing so. key art for that one. Looks real good. Okay. Well, let's get into the questions. Yes, do we have questions? I think Adam is frantically learning how to pull questions. <laughs> <laughs> We've got different producers today because we're, we're doing 24 hours. We're not going to ask our mods to work for 24 hours. So we've just got uh, people from it's the just, company. Yeah. Our lead artist, Adam, is, uh, is producing here. He's waving. We no can't one see, can him, see but, him, but, yeah. but uh, he is waving. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we have a champion's question. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, here you go, Dad. <laughs> let's get started. Um. Uh, <laughs> So here's a question from Cronj999, who asks, uh, I'm running both the Steam version and the CNE standalone version of Idle Champions. If I close the Steam version or it crashes, Steam will not let me restart until the CNE version of closed is closed. Is this a CNE launcher problem, a Steam problem, or a Unity problem? Uh, Have we not fixed this yet? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so the problem is that the... It's a Dave problem. The uh, standalone client does still have all of the Steam... Uh, integration in it and that includes accessing the uh the steam uh the steam client dll which when you connect to it it thinks you're connected to steam 
Um, so as far as it's concerned, uh, if the CNE client one is open, then you are, in fact, running the Steam version, which is, of course, not the case. Uh, you can um, get around this by going into, uh, if, you click on the, um, if you click on the game in Steam and you go to the, the, where you can view the local files for it, you can launch the game again from there, um, and it'll launch just fine. Um, but it is because Steam, the Steam client believes the game is running because the CNE client one is running. But and, and I intend to fix that. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty straightforward <laughs> fix. We just gotta yeah. find the. But time. it's got an easy workaround right now. So someone's it's, uh, been it's spending. Not on fire. Someone's been spending all their time planning uh, segments for Extra Life. Yes, it's always uh, <laughs> quite the uh, quite the endeavor. Um, so. <clears throat> yeah. Um, here's a non uh, Dev Insights question. Uh, from Counting Coup, who asked, did CNE have to deal with any flooding over the last week? No, so we lucked out, yeah, although we pretty lucky um, here on the island. there was definitely a lot of, uh, of issues caused by the flooding. In fact, mm -hmm. we've seen some pretty rough pictures from, uh, from the Malahat, which is a section of highway that connects us down here on the South Island to the rest of the island that just washed away, like the, half the road was gone. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty historic rains uh, here in the Pacific Northwest in the last, uh, in the last week. And uh, I, I don't know, I think Vancouver is still cut off from the rest of uh, yeah. from Canada. All, all f five or eight highways or something are, are still shut down. I know there was news pretty of crazy. 275 people who were helicoptered off the highway somewhere yes. up in the interior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, off of the yeah, highway seven or 99 or something like that. Somewhere anyway, up there. anyway, yeah, it was, it was pretty insane. And, uh, and my backyard also got a lot oh, of a I, had a very, I had a very big puddle in my backyard so it was also horrible mm. for me the worst um. thing here though is that uh, because it cut off some of our gas shipments uh, mm -hmm. people panicked by it and they were lining up at the gas stations yesterday and then now a bunch of them are sold out I said, as yeah as I know, most of them are this sold morning out when i was here. coming in I, I drove past uh two two gas stations that were were fine there weren't even any lineups or anything and there was plenty of gas and then another one closer to town here where they they didn't have anything so Pretty crazy times. Silly people. Yeah. I've been saying uh, jokily that uh, we had the, the big heat wave in the summer, the, <laughs> un, the unprecedented heat wave in the summer, and then we had uh, this unprecedented rainfall. There was also a like a tornado off the coast of Vancouver yep, uh, next to UBC, a couple, yep. <laughs> like a month ago. Uh, so we're expecting uh, like the big big earthquake or uh or major uh snowfall or something we get some snow uh, we don't year. get enough snow here so. yeah well yeah. I'll say that and then we'll get six feet of it it's a day off snow day <laughs> okay uh, <clears throat> let's hear let's go with this let's next not, question let's not do that one there um we've got a question here from star chaser 43 and mm -hmm. star chaser 43 oh uh, would like to know do you have a favorite story uh, you'd like to share about cne oh man See, I slipped here in and asked that so that I didn't have to answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I have a story I can tell about CNE. I'm not sure it's the, our favorite story, but we can, we can tell the story about how kind of CNE came to be and, uh, um, and how, how sort of Dave and I met. So <laughs> Dave and I have actually known each other uh, since we were... Years, since 33 we were, years? How old are we? Since we were about six years old. Uh, we met in first grade. And, uh, and we were both very into computers very early on and got, it, got started programming very early on. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's making we're, a face at we're us. We're big nerds. Yes, Adam. <laughs> he was telling his story. I got into drawing early on. I like drawing. Let's see. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got into programming very early on. I don't know what age you started programming at, but like my parents got seven me or a eight, computer at basic. seven or eight yep. and, yeah, and basic. Uh, and making little text-based adventure games, <laughs> and uh, and and Dave and I made a game uh, called Dots uh, when we were about eleven or twelve years old, and uh, and we were you know we were big Street shot seven, kids. We were yeah. yeah we were yeah. Uh, we were we were making this game. And we were like okay we need to like make this game like legit. We need to like publish this game. Is that what we were thinking? I just thought it needed a logo. It needed, I've been it all needed those, a company. All the you know, games a company. have a splash screen, and exactly. the splash screen has a company logo. Yes. So a game has to start with a splash well, screen. Well, I don't know about you. I published it and gave copies to, oh, my, to okay. my family. Okay. Anyway, so we needed a name for our company uh, <laughs> of our 12-year-olds. And, uh, and so we really liked LucasArts adventure games like uh, Monkey Island and... and um, uh, Day of the Tentacle, Day of the Tentacle and Sam and Max at the Road. Sam and Max, exactly. Was, that time I think it was, yeah. And there were some other ones that we really liked. And, Indiana uh, Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Yeah. yeah all These are all the, the, the CDs that came with my first computer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, so our names are David and Justin. So we decided to name our company DJ Arts, like Lucas Arts, DJ Arts, and uh, we made a little logo for it, and uh, it looked suspiciously like the Lucas Arts logo, uh, and we did an animation up and, and put that in front of the game, and then you know went off and and did the rest of our schooling. And then uh, right when we were just about to finish up university, we started, we, well, we made Egg Breaker, um, which was, uh, as old fans may know, um, was a uh, Facebook code, game of all things. It was a Facebook game. It was the first game that we, uh, that we published. Uh, and we published that, and actually Codename started out called, being called DJ Arts Games. Uh, because we were trying to come up with a name for our company after Egg Breaker started to, to do well. And, uh, and we decided to use DJ Arts because that's the okay. name we'd had for, <laughs> for however long it was between those two times. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's how the, the company, the, the name of the company yeah. started out. And we had that name for five or six years until, until eventually we yeah. rebranded... Uh, Eric joined us, and we I mean, a lot of people confused the name. Actually, they would call it Dejarts. They thought we were mm -hmm. the, either they thought we were making music because I got the DJ mm -hmm. part, they or we they like, called it Dejarts because they thought it was they could just yeah. yeah. That's why I jokingly refer to it as Dejarts Games mm. now. Whenever I refer to the old name, um, but obviously now we're Codename Entertainment, which yeah. has one drawback, and that is it makes it really difficult to type in our email it's address. A, it's a very <laughs> it's like it's to, to, a to log into my email. Uh, it's we, so long. We would love to have had C and E or C and but apparently those three letter domains are uh, either right. unavailable or extremely. They sold uh, expensive. a little bit before yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2012 or Just whatever it was bit. that we yeah. rebranded. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't uh, know if that's your favorite story. I well, can't think of anything that's that you know. A story. The favorite story maybe is the, uh, the the gelatinous cube that exploded on everyone, but uh, <laughs> let's just a, move on. <laughs> that's that's a sad that's, story. That's a sad story. That's okay. a very sad story. Um, uh, let's see here. Here's a question from uh, from Cassius thirty three five who says, "So I understand you had a Martian invasion recently. How did that go?" Because Mars is here. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> yes. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> we've uh, we've been fortunate enough to bring uh, a bunch of uh, sort of our more remote workers up. Uh, we've got Mars up here. We've got uh, uh, Lauren up here. We've got and Luke. We've got Luke v, we've and V. Got and and, and, uh, and Maddie, Maddie has also yeah. made her way over here from, from the Far <laughs> East. Massachusetts. <laughs> don't do that. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, okay? Yeah, in fact, uh, Mars will be running a show later today. And yeah, I was he's very excited Battle about Ball. it. And we've been watching, our, I've spent the last weeks at doing uh, stream tests and setup, and um, I'm pretty excited about Mars. I know he's going to, he's very enthusiastic. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be a good show. So stay tuned for that. Nice. It's, I think it's around noon, noonish. Yeah. I know right after no. this. How, yeah. Battle Ball is 2.30. 2.30. Oh, okay. So yeah, so stick around for that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be yeah. good. Right after this, uh, Lauren's running a D&D &D campaign. Or D&D, &D, not campaign. And one <laughs> shot. Uh, yes. That should be pretty awesome as well. Okay. Uh, we've got a question here from JDog2773 asking, are there any leftover <laughs> Dev Insights questions from last episode? No, no, we answered them all. <laughs> yeah, no, there probably are. I'm sure there are. I think, I think just we uh, don't have the doc for that. I think we're doing we're doing a Dev Insights episode next week, even though it's uh, uh, U.S. Thanksgiving. It's uh, not a holiday here. It's not a holiday here in Canada. Yep. So if you don't like your family, uh, <laughs> just tune in to Dev Insights oh, at one o'clock on uh, <laughs> uh, next Thursday, and we will answer some more uh, questions. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. The real bunny beast asks: uh, If we don't get enough questions, which reenactment by Justin can we look forward to? You know, it's funny because I, I keep st we have to kind of st we've done twenty episodes of Dev Insights now, and one of our running jokes in the intro is that if people don't ask questions, they'll have to to make do with one of my one man reenactments of of some movie or show or uh, or something or the previous episode or the previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and we've been kind of stretching for that because I've actually I haven't seen a lot of. A lot of really popular movies. I just watched Alien for the first time a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how you made it that long uh, without seeing Alien. Uh, you know what? Having seen Alien, I could see how I wouldn't make it that long without seeing Alien because it was all right, but it wasn't, you know, amazing. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> you're getting a look from Adam. I mean, it was no Prometheus. Oh no, let's not get into that. <laughs> um, 
But I, re I would really like to, to do a one-man reenactment of Star Wars at some point, A New Hope, because uh, another thing that Dave and I were really into was Star Wars when we were, when we were young. So uh, Star, I, I, Wars. Star Wars is cool. <laughs> oh, the Star... <laughs> Adam says Star Trek is the nerdy one. Sorry, my bad. Oh. Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Star Wars would be really fun. I could probably do that. Most of it. It's actually been a couple of years since I've seen it. <laughs> okay, what do we got next? Uh, uh, here's a cool question for you, Dave. All right. From Lord Ice Dragon. Uh, this is a really Ooh, good question. I recognize some of these names. Uh, who says, as developers who have successfully re released several games in your career, looking back at the successes and the failures for each of you, what would you go back and change if you could? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a... That's a that's, That's a, a really, really cool question. Um, so I guess we've released, what are we at now? Like 10 oh, or 11 okay. yeah, games probably, that we've released. Something like that. Um, and we've definitely had a number that we released that didn't, uh, definitely didn't get a lot of traction. Um, and often we talk about games here, we talk about games being bets. And you know, you put them, you, you get them to the point where they're presentable, uh, you can get them in front of an audience and then you see if people, if they, if people actually, like if it's, if it's got traction, like if people look at it and like, yeah, that's really cool, or people play it and they put it down and like, nah, you know, that wasn't really, a, really something for me. Um, and so we made, whew, so we started with Egg Breaker mm -hmm. and then we did Egg Drop, which was more of a, uh, an arcade style game. And then we did- Plinko with eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we, we actually worked idea. on we worked on Very one for fragile. a long time that was um, like a fish collection game. Um, that was the first one. I it wasn't, yeah. wasn't a very long time, but it was a. And then we spent actually a, a significant amount of time trying to make what would have been very similar to like a Sims Online, mm -hmm. um, which we, never we saw doing, the light of day. We were doing Sims Online <laughs> for years before. Uh, well, that before was the, sort of the nail it. in the coffin. Was that <laughs> about halfway through us working on it, EA released one that was. <laughs> um, and then I think maybe sort of a, the thing I would change probably is Mystic Guardians. Mystic Guardians was actually a, quite a bit of fun. It was our first, mm -hmm. um, it was, it was a, a monster collection game, kind of a Pokemon style. Mm -hmm. um, and actually players really loved it, but they played it to, like they would, we, we'd, we'd obviously our, our game uh, model is to have something that, that you can come back to um, and have content every day. Um, but the players played it in such a way that they just binged the whole thing. And mm -hmm. I think we only had maybe 25 or 30 hours worth of, of straight content, um, which you'd think would be enough for <laughs> to get you'd us think going. think that would last for a little while. <laughs> but players would come in and they would they'd play the whole thing. They'd play all the way through the, the a full 30 sort of hours worth of content and then they would leave. Mm -hmm. And the problem was we actually, in order to get the model rolling, we actually had to have players come back and sort of start to grow a critical mass around it. And so players would come in, they'd play it, and then they would leave. And because it's a free game, and because of the way that the free game model works, you have to have players coming back on a weekly basis, you know, to, to keep the, get the community growing and then to support the game by buying items in game. Um, that one just didn't work out that way. And I, I feel yeah. like, we could have done something with that, that either either we could have sold it as a product, like done it as like a full game or, or changed the model in some way. Yeah, um, we tried we tried a couple of different things with that one. Um, like we tried having an area that you had to like you had to pay like five dollars or something to get into where there were new monsters in there to collect. But I think the the monster collector genre is still one that hasn't really been. It doesn't really fit the model. For, it just doesn't uh, really fit the yeah, model very yeah. well, or at least the kind of the Pokemon style adventure, you know, story driven ones. Uh, there's definitely some that are more kind of like idle games um, that are just like collector games that, that have worked a little bit better, but it's, uh, it's pretty tough. Yeah, um, for sure. And I don't think we've actually seen, you know, I, think the, I know another, a couple of companies did try to make some, some online sort of long-term style games like that, and they didn't take off either. Yeah, right around the time there were a couple of other ones, and and they they seem to have fizzled out as well, yeah. uh, which is that's uh, too bad. But I mean, um, Mystic Guardians did lead to Bushwhacker Two. That's true. Uh, we took that directly. tech and we pivoted took, that as quickly <laughs> as we, possible. We took that engine and and a lot of that art and uh, and did that uh, and did that for Bushwhacker Two. And Bushwhacker Two, I think we we put that together initially in like just oh, a, yeah. just a couple of months. I took the Mystic Guardians uh, code base, pivoted it to be to, to a functioning version of Bushwhacker Two in about six weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a. Uh, and then what else did we have in there? We had, um, well, we had obviously some other egg breakers. We had Egg Breaker Two, 
uh, mm -hmm. and then Eggbreaker Adventures, which we learned. I think we learned a lot from the the first couple Eggbreakers. Um, and Eggbreaker Adventures, the the major thing we did different in that one was we had uh, sort of branching. Uh, progression lines so instead of just it being you kind of go through the game in a linear order um, you could sort of do the different adventures um, separately which I think worked really well for that game yeah it had and, a spoke uh, system like, it's a spoken hub system rather than, yeah. uh, than a linear progression which yeah. meant that if you came into the game late like if you hadn't played oh Adam's going to sign okay <laughs> we mentioned that uh, um, if you came into the game, you know, a year in, you weren't way behind everyone else because mm -hmm. sort of the new content came out and you could play the new content because it was it was separated off as sort mm -hmm. of uh, everyone starting on a similar footing for that. Yeah. Which is something that we've sort of progressed to do in, in our like our event content, right? So we yep. balance that around making it so that if you're if you're new, you're, you you haven't played, you know, for a year, you're not left out of, mm -hmm. of the new uh, uh, and updated like the content that that's um, relevant. Yeah. yeah, I think that worked really well for that game, and that's definitely something. If I could port that back in time, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like the question yeah. is, what would we go back and change uh, if we could? I think that was a good learning that we yeah. would have would have ported back into some of our older and games. Adam held up a sign saying that uh, not to forget about Vampire Mob City. Of course, Vampire Mob our, City, uh, mobster city building. <laughs> yeah, it was 3D. Uh, well, the, the graphics well, pre-rendered 3D. Yeah, pre-rendered yeah. 3D. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was a fun little game, but uh, again, it just didn't take off. We were kind of putting it out into it's kind of one of the things um one of the things that what would we go back and change if we could like if, what, if we knew now or if we knew then what we know now i think the the biggest thing we would change is sort of um around um advertising and stuff early on um, oh, for this sure. This is kind of this well, is kind of way behind yeah. the curtain kind of stuff. But like, keep when your we, kimono closed. When we when we started <laughs> out, uh, like Egg Breaker, when we released that, that was uh, very very early on in Facebook games. Like that was before there was any Farmville. That was before, before Zenga. Was any, that was before Zenga. Like did it a was, salt and burn approach on the. It was <laughs> it was very early on, and there was very few like there weren't even Facebook payments. Like you, yeah. you did your payments through third party providers and there were like very few restrictions on sharing and, and, uh, and eventually, yeah, Farmville uh, and Zynga came out and just kind of ruined they that for everyone. They flooded every single social channel with yeah. their advertisements to the point that Facebook then had to turn them all off and add yeah. restrictions. Yeah, it was, that was, that was a um, rough yeah. period of time, but it was uh, during, before Facebook or before Zynga came along and, and did all that, um, advertising and and, uh, and and getting new users into the game was ridiculously cheap and easy oh and yeah there was a viral factor probably about five to one you know you yeah got one user in and they would share it with five of their friends so it was mm -hmm. um hindsight was, if we go back and then get, go back get more and, uh, land share there but and just, I don't yeah. know if we're doing fine now so no I, no I think we're doing fine now it's just it's one of the major things that's changed in the last 13 years is just that that cost yeah. um you know yeah. five to one versus now it's like Cost five or ten dollars per user if you want to if you want to advertise and get a user in there. So it's gotten pretty pretty crazy. That would definitely be something that I would change if I could go back in time and talk to <laughs> talk, talk to, to young Justin. Justin. Listen, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I think uh, we've spent enough see. time on that question. That, that was a, that was a good question though. I like that. Uh, let's see. Here's a, here's a question for for you, Dave, uh, that I know the answer to, uh, from Flanagan who says, uh, true or false, on holidays, you don't touch the computer even with a stick. Nope. Nope. Um, no, we're ending at 10, right? Yeah. 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 Sorry, Adam's holding up a <laughs> sign here, letting us sign. know that, uh, just checking in on the time. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, 9.50 will, will be our... our um, okay. Uh, yeah. No. Unfortunately, over the holidays, um, we have to stay uh, within within re within stick distance of a computer mm -hmm. um, because uh, s server issues could crop up at any moment. In fact, that's usually when they they choose to to crop up. So mm -hmm. yes, more often than not. In fact, it was a running joke early on in the company that any time that Dave and I left the country, um, either together or separately, that uh, the servers would go down. It's true. We had a number of outages that occurred right around GDC when we go. A little bit of a jinx. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll cross that guy out there. Uh, what do you think, Dave? You want to pick one? All right. Next question um, from uh, I don't know how to say that. For your for your <laughs> uh, still go, still want to do that supercut of you trying yeah, to pronounce no, people's names. No. Fury. 
Yeah, that works. Could be Fury. Um, Fury wants to know, Justin, what type, what brand are your glasses? They really love the style. These are Ray-Bans. That was an easy question. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question. Are you happy the way the timer is working out for legendary item upgrades? No. <laughs> Do you care to say a few more words about that? No, I am not. <laughs> uh, no, we've got a, um, we had a planning session on that last Friday um, before all this crazy extra life stuff started and <laughs> taking all of our time. And um, yeah, no, there's a bunch of changes that we're going to be doing to uh, legendary items, to trials. Uh, and it's just a matter of a matter of time before that stuff starts to come out. Um, so yeah, uh, not happy with really uh, a bunch of stuff about how the legendary system is working in Idle Champions, and we'll probably be changing that pretty as soon as we can. <laughs> pretty as soon as we can, okay. Yeah. Um, I did see a question here that came by in the chat um, asking about the donations that are showing on, I assume, the Extra Life website. Um, as, and then, and they're looking at obviously what we're seeing in the overlay, which is mm -hmm. going to be showing our totals. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of the in-game donations, which are, are, are rather the in-game uh, charity pack uh, revenue, will be applied after Extra Life, after mm -hmm. the um, after the window on that closes. I'm not sure those will be available after the after the event for a few days. It'll still be applied for charity. I don't know what the do you have the the date that I ends? do not have the date. Okay. I'm hoping somebody knows. Uh, who is paying attention <laughs> in chat? Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a period of time. I think it's. I think we're running them for like a week or something like that, or two weeks. Well, certainly uh, they started Wednesday, so. and so maybe it's Wednesday to Wednesday. Something like All that. Right. Well, we obviously are not in the know on that, even though we really, really should be. <laughs> if you if uh, you want the your your uh, your donations from that to go to to go to Extra Life, uh, definitely buy those sooner rather than later, so that we can add them to our total and uh, and ideally sort of see a nice total by the end of our twenty four hour event. Yeah, yeah. So once that but once that period ends, once we get to the the point at which we're not uh, contributing that to charity anymore, um, we will then make those payments directly to the Extra Life website, and those will be applied. Um, yeah, after that point. So. Um, yeah, uh, let's see here. Ionic Thrust asks, do you have a favorite and or funniest memory of playing games together growing up? I know I have one. Oh, man. We've got quite a few. The first one that comes to mind is um, playing through uh, Diablo 1. Oh, yeah. Uh, we actually... Um, what did we end up? We ended up, I think we ended up connecting. We ended up creating a network using a parallel cable. <laughs> I think it was our, our the little IPX over parallel. Was um, that Diablo 1 or was that Dungeon Siege? Nope, it was Diablo 1. Okay. Yeah. Because at the end of the game, you, uh, yeah, I think it was the first time I'd actually finished Diablo 1. <laughs> um, I think that, that took us probably like 16 or 17 hours. It takes a long time. Then you watch a speedrunner go do it in like 30 <laughs> minutes and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Or actually, you know what it is? The other one, the other one was Doom 2. Doom 2, that, yeah. was, that was an awesome yeah. moment. So at the end of Doom 2, for players who are unaware... Um, <laughs> Might be dating <laughs> ourselves a little alert. bit here. The end of the game, there's the, this la the very last uh, level in Doom 2 has got this sort of big stair step down uh, sort of area, and there's a, um, a pillar in the middle. Mm -hmm. that once you've activated it, it starts to go up and down. And it, on the wall at the back is this big like demon visage... Um, mm -hmm. And there's a hole in its head, <laughs> and you have to actually, at the right timing, get a rocket into the hole. Mm -hmm. And I think when we were doing that, we tried over and over, and we kept missing. And then at the very, the, the, I guess the very last time we did it, because after you do it, it's over. Um, we actually managed to get it, and we got two of them in identical the times, same time, same time sure. two rockets in. Oh, um, that was pretty awesome. And, and the beautiful thing about that one is actually, if you go in, it's like the, it's actually John Romero's head on a stick <laughs> yeah. uh, in inside the demon's head. So John Romero, um, you know, clip inside, uh, was one of the founders of id Software with John Carmack. Um, and then he left to do some others. Anyway, uh, but um, his head is on a stick in there. So if you, <laughs> if you know clip in, if you cheat in there, you can find, uh, find his head on a stick inside the last level of Doom 2. Um, but yeah, we yeah. got they got those two rockets in at exactly the same time. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I think one of my my favorite moments was um, we we're playing Quake, and uh, this was back in the day. We we're playing Quake online, 
But this is back in the day of dial-up internet. So you had to like dial in, use up your phone line. Your, and of course, we were both young. And so if our parents wanted to use the phone line, they'd pick it up and disconnect us. And we'd be like, Mom, Dad, <laughs> stop it. We're trying to play quiet. All right. and, uh, and both of our families had two phone lines. And so what we would do is we would uh, dial into the, to the servers or to the, to the ISP and then connect to the servers with one phone line. And then we'd call each other with the other one because this was before there was any like voice you know, communication over the internet because we were getting like 2,800 baud or something like that. And it would ruin our ping, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and our pings were already an amazing like 160, 200 or so. So, I mean... It was worse um, than that, wasn't it? Closer to like three or four hundred. That was I pretty bad. I, I think I got you were way out in the, uh, in the mountains somewhere. Yeah, I got. Sure. <laughs> but um, so we would call each other and we would basically have voice chat talking on the phone. Uh, sorry, the phone has a cord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the same time as we're playing Quake, and we just dominate these matches, uh, these free for all matches, because we're young and not fair players. <laughs> but that was really fun. I always enjoyed that. Uh, let's see here. Here's a question that I think is tailor-made for you, Dave. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> excellent. Uh, from Padlock14. Uh, and Padlock14 wants to know, and this is actually, let me do some uh, some some backing up here. To, uh, to We were kind of going through the history of Codename. That's true. We stopped and, short. Uh, we of, stopped uh, at Bushwhacker 2. Uh, but one of the games that came out after Bushwhacker 2 was a game called Shards of Titan, uh, which was more of an RPG uh, adventure kind of story-driven game. Um, and uh, that was a really cool game. And uh, Padlock14 wants to know, what truly happened with Shards of Titan, and is there any chance of it coming back or being rebuilt? Yeah, so Shards of Titan um, certainly was probably one of my favorite projects that we worked on here, um, just because it was more of a, it was an, it was an RPG game, it was an adventure game. Um, it was sort of more in line with the kind of games that that, uh, that I personally you know play um, in my off time. And Shards... Um, We'd, we'd base sort of the, the way the game was was built around um, sort of there were some popular games on on the congregate like on the uh, web based sites um, that were these uh, I think they were Korean um, M, like yeah. RPG or style games and like War Tune yeah like War Tune not War Tunes Eric, not War Tunes listening. Um, <laughs> but these games uh, they tended to actually monetize very well by pitching players against each other. Like it was a very P PVP heavy and mm -hmm. um, the way that, that players in those actually managed to defeat each other was by buying better gear, like actually buying better uh, equipment yeah. and, and yeah, levels and stuff. Yeah, they were very, very whale yeah. driven. It was very, is... sort of very aggressive in that way. And yeah. we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to, we wanted <laughs> a game our that, style. Um, yeah, our <laughs> style certainly, we like to have it so that if, if, you're, if you're playing the game and you're not, uh, spending in game that you can still make it just as far but you might find that you know you don't have as you don't look as cool or it takes you a little bit longer mm -hmm. so and, and we, we yeah we tend to err on that it takes you a little bit longer yeah. um side of things but we don't want to have sort of anything sort of gated by you know if you if you purchased or not in the game um but these games as i say they were very heavily driven by by um competitive purchasing uh pvp style stuff and we thought we could do that without sort of making that a big part of the game. And so we did. Um, <laughs> we released the game with, I believe, two two zones, two worlds, like two maps to two, start. Two it was, areas, uh, it was yeah. a, a forest area and a desert forest area. And, desert, yeah. um, and we just didn't get enough um, traction on it. Um, and it, it wasn't sort of, it wasn't paying for itself, um, unfortunately. It wasn't able to pay for the servers and the continued development on it uh, in, in the time that we needed it to sort of grow to get to that level. Um, and while we were, when we launched it with those first two areas, and then we added a third one, which was a, a, a jungle area. And that one had a bit of a, that was a bit of a shortfall on that too, because um, the intricacy of uh, Adam's <laughs> That's Adam's fault. The intricacy <laughs> of, of that particular area, um, it had a very, it had a, I don't know what the best way to describe it is. So when we build the areas up, sort of if you've seen Bushwhacker or uh, if you've seen Shards, um, the the areas have what we call doodads, and you start, you know, first when you're making an area, first you lay out the map and you paint the textures on the ground, and then you start placing objects, like smaller objects, and then or I think we actually go to the large the large objects first, and then mm -hmm. you kind of decorate around them. So you sort of get, you place your trees, and then you sort of place sort of the rocks and where the paths are going to be, and then you start putting down grass and flowers and mushrooms and all the fun stuff that we have. Um, and just due to the nature of the jungle, which was this very dense vegetation, uh, I think we had over a hundred unique sort of 
art elements that ended up going. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Adam sliding. Can't hide Adam. <laughs> um, and it, it just it it was actually a really uh, meticulous process to get those ones placed, and so those zones time. actually took a really really long time to yeah. get out. And so while we were we'd launched with our first two areas, and we'd hoped to get another area out very shortly thereafter, but we ended up. Um, it took us significantly longer than we thought it would. Um, I think largely because of that. Um, and so we, we were in this situation where we had sort of a very small player base that was dedicated, but it wasn't growing. And we got that content out. Um, and we did keep with it for quite a while after that. We actually mm-hmm. released two more. Um, two more areas, two, two more yeah. The Shattered, we did the Shattered Forest in a couple of different updates. I think we broke it into yeah. two. Yeah. And one of the things we'd learned from the, the jungle one, which actually made the shattered forest come together much, much, uh, much faster, was that we made much larger uh, blocks of, of doodads for for placing down, so that it didn't end up being such a meticulous process. Mm-hmm. Um, did like the tech indoor tech zones. And oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were there was a lot of cool stuff and like sh- multiplayer dungeons in that one, which was a really cool feature, which I really enjoyed uh, working on. Yeah. But, yep. Uh, um, but I think long story short on shards was that we just we were unable to get a critical mass of players into it, and and we know we tr- we tried um, to to get the the word out on that one, but um, and just not enough players to support the development of it, and so eventually we had to uh, we had to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it was that was that was a that was a tough one to. A tough. Yeah. Uh, and I've kept the servers live and, and ran the events for players who uh, <laughs> who are still. Uh, there's, there's still a very small de- handful of dedicated players who still play, um, and the servers are still live for now. Um, but uh, <laughs> with the death of Flash, that became another problem, too, because you can't yeah. access the game on the website anymore. So there's a, a downloadable version that people got their hands on. But, um, yeah. Um, and then it's, I guess the remainder of the question, is there any chance of it coming back or being rebuilt? And it uh, doesn't look like it at this time. That's certainly not, uh, not something that, uh, that we've been talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Just keep on going down the list here. Yep. Uh, and Fury is back again. Uh, and they say, what is your preferred programming language in, um, and or, or why? Or or why. Or or why. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I think we can maybe answer this with, like, what programming languages that we've kind of used throughout the years, uh, rather than saying our preferred ones, because I oh, think... I mean... I mean you I'm a, I'm a speak, big I'm a big fan of C sharp. I'd say you know, <laughs> I mean we've used everything over the well not everything. I guess we got a lot. Of, we started with you know some C plus plus, and for the web stuff we got a lot of PHP. Which I don't know that we prefer PHP, but you know you know PHP gets a lot of flack, but it does the job. It does the job, and it's fine. got a lot of advantages. So um, like so from our from our back end perspective, we've got PHP, which is primarily running like run most of our games. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, we, the shard server was was Java, mm-hmm. um, and one of the actually the biggest drawback to having a, a server that's that's Java rather than, than PHP is that we can't make changes on the fly without doing a recompile and a restart, and mm-hmm. you know it sort of interrupts the flow. It makes it a, a much bigger process. So let's say PHP gets a it's a bad rep, but uh, yeah, the fact um, that it just sort of runs on the fly means that you know we can we can literally we can push backend fixes and it won't interrupt anyone's game at all, which is. Well, really nice. which is what we want. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to interrupt people's games, and we do want to push fixes. <laughs> yeah, and all the Unity stuff for the front end that we do for uh, for champions is uh, is C sharp, and I don't have any complaints on that. And I'm a particular fan of Visual Studio as a as an IDE. Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. What's yours? <laughs> I don't do a lot of programming anymore these oh, days. You say that. I just but <laughs> do it. I, I I just do pretty much purely PHP when I do do programming. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm 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 more on the game design side in terms of what I kind of enjoy doing uh, these days. Yeah, you but still end up doing a fair amount of tool. Uh, I do development. tool development, yeah. but that's mainly just to help me do game design quickly, because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I'm uh, manually in databases uh, doing stuff, which I do not enjoy. <laughs> One of my <laughs> no, least favorite languages would that. be SQL. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, do you want to ask the next one? I can answer the next sure. one. I've got an idea for that one. <laughs> Question from Meshach1025 is... Oh, not that one. <laughs> no, not that one? You can do that one, too. That's fine. Oh, all right. No, you can, you can do that one. Do Meshach's first. All right. Fair enough. Um, do you all actually enjoy playing the games, or do you always look at it through the lens of being a creator? 
Uh, so f- for me, I I do uh, I do play both Crusaders and Idol Champions as a as a player on a regular basis. Um, I I think that in terms of how I play the game, I think that there's a lot of people in our community who are far more into it um, than I am in terms of like optimizing formations and stuff. Like you know, I've 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 pushed to level six hundred or something, uh, but I haven't really pushed to to a thousand. And I think there's a lot of people who who do that. Um, I think it's, it's definitely hard to, to look at it without looking at it through the lens of the creator, but I, I try really hard. <laughs> Not <laughs> um, only that, you but, end up looking at other games through the eyes of a creator. Oh, too. absolutely. Like every time, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you play, when, when you are in game development and you play other games, it becomes very, very obvious sort of the tricks that people are using in other games to try and, you know. Uh, encourage you to do a certain thing or or go a certain way oh yeah Um, like as a (laughs) as a game designer the uh, when you're playing like a first person shooter and like looking at the level design and how they like uh suggest that you go in certain directions with sort of the design with lighting and and the way that areas are filled out it actually uh sometimes when they break those conventions it can get really really confusing for, for me <laughs> and i'll be like okay there's light shining on this wall over here but that's not the way i'm supposed to go what was the level designer thinking here and and then i just get stuck there for a long time when like someone you know who maybe isn't looking at it through that lens will actually just look around and find the path out of the area uh much more quickly than i will yeah no, i find that's constantly the case sort of, especially when you play games that have um Often there'll be indicators for particular ability usages that just show up immediately. You just see them instantly. Whereas, mm-hmm. it, um, like I think the first one that comes to mind is actually uh, Tomb Raider. The Tomb, the Tomb Raider I was games. The yeah, Tomb Raiders they had just, as well. They had this such obvious um, markings where you, mm-hmm. you could use each of your abilities or where something could be climbed or what the and it's really it, clever. Like it works really, yeah, yeah, it's it's good. But you see, you see it immediately, and suddenly the level disappears, and all you're seeing is like, okay, I can see we've got an access there, we've got a climb piece there. All right, this is gonna, this is how this is you're gonna work. You're just seeing yep. a pathing. Yep. All you see is the yep, your head. yep, yeah, yeah. Um, Cool. Let's pop back to the question though that you were actually hoping I would ask, <laughs> and that is uh, from I- Iconic Thrust asks, what game feature are you most proud of? Yeah. So uh, I was thinking about this as I was looking at this question. I, I think the uh, the one that I'm kind of most proud of is is featured heavily in our last two games, which is the formation um, kind yeah. of setup. And uh, I, I think it's 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 very unique to to our games in terms of the sort of the just the depth of the the formation mechanics and the depth of all the different abilities. I I think that uh, other games that that try and do it don't do it as well as we do it <laughs> so uh so i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with sort of that feature and and how that how that um came to be out of crusaders yeah it's funny actually you know you say that it reminds me when we actually when we came up with that layout not necessarily the way that they were going to interact but how they were how that layout was going to look which eventually of course led led into oh well, we connect them via um was actually right here in this very spot Although at the time um, there was a, this was an office, was. not a uh, yes. not a room with a green screen. Oh man, I'm going back um, in time, and there's walls all around. And us I think again. it was it was you and Eric and myself. And we were sitting in here talking about what to do, what to how to make our game different. Then I think we were looking at some of the existing idle games at the time, which included yeah. um, um, Clicker Heroes. Clicker Heroes and, yeah. And of course, Clicker Heroes didn't have um, a representation, or no, it did have a representation of the one hero. That it just was had up. no, it had one monster. One monster, and you right? Click the you monster. The, yeah, right. And, and your right, heroes right. just did damage to the monster, and they were just in a list. And I remember suggesting that we put the characters up, sort of Final Fantasy battle style, mm-hmm. like sort of like Final Fantasy two, where they've got the two rows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I remember drawing that up on the board, and so like that was one of the earlier sort of threads that led into the way the formations laid out, because we didn't want to just put the one character up, or yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a that was a really fun time coming up with uh, Crusaders, and then uh, that was that was right when we were kind of trying to figure out how to get shards to really work um, really well. We were kind of seeing the writing of the wall, of like maybe this <laughs> won't work, and so we were starting to look at our next bet, which was uh, what would turn into Crusaders. And uh, yeah, that was a really exciting time for the studio. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, let's see here. Do you have any here, here's here, Dave. Let's let's see. You can talk about some uh, like some stuff here. Some stuff. Uh, so, do you have any personal side projects of passion uh, you build that are just for you, like things you do that are not necessarily games, 
Well, I mean, I assume the, uh, <laughs> the question might have been around that. It might um, have been, but I, I, we'll I have we'll questions pivot about, yeah, what, what kind of things are you into, like, outside of games? Adam, do you want to grab the, yeah, grab uh, the sword? Grab the, grab yeah, the knife from the other table over there. <laughs> yeah, so definitely um, I keep myself occupied with uh, things that, things that making things with my hands is uh, something I enjoy doing. Um, and so actually, so a lot of the furniture here um, at, uh, at Codename, um, I, I put together myself or, or built. Um, this table that we're sitting at is something I actually put together. Uh, this, these tops we use for all of our, um, all of our desks here at Codename, and I, I, I build them myself. Uh, so every time I get a new, uh, a new employee, I build them a desk, and uh, it's always sort of an odd thing. It's like, wait, you built this? Oh, no, I don't want to hurt it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> another thing that I, I got into, I say recently, but maybe about almost a year yeah, ago it's now, been about a year. Um, yeah. which was a result of going down a YouTube rabbit hole, um, <laughs> was, uh, was melting and casting metal. Um, and so this, uh, this, this sword here actually, or dagger, um, <laughs> This Adam actually built or designed in, in 3D Studio or no Blender, um, and then we we 3D printed it and I, I put the pieces together and then um, cast it in sand and I melted. Uh, actually, this is made out of aluminum cans that I collected from the office, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which we then melted down and poured into the sand casting. Um, I think it turned out quite well. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera there, but. Uh, the only, um, the only problem with this particular piece is that the, uh, the handle, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but the handle has spikes coming off of it. I don't know why Adam thought yeah. that spikes coming this off was a designed, was a good idea. Yeah, by an artist to look but, cool, but not necessarily to be... Uh, <laughs> you, you grab it and they just, they just poke into your palm. <laughs> and it's like, you, you hit someone that's probably going to hurt yourself more than them. So, yes. uh, anyway, it lives on the, uh, the meeting table over there. And so, you know, sort of waving it around. If, uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh, Eric oh and Eric's got to, some oh, coins too. That's true. Must be listening. Yeah, we've got some uh, some Idle Champions coins that Dave also cast. This one, I think, is this like bronze or oh, copper? This is, this is copper. Straight yeah, up copper. copper. We won't say uh, where we got the copper from for that. <laughs> we pulled it out of the walls, and yeah, here's a C and E one. Um, oh, this one's a little bit lighter. This must be a That's aluminum. aluminum. Yeah. yeah. So these are fun. These are cool little coins. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, We've got time see. for one or two more questions. One more question. All one right. more question. Okay. Oh my God. We got to find a good one. Uh, oh, that one's going to be a long <laughs> answer. That one's gonna I, be a short I was just going to read this question. We're not going to answer it. But okay. I this uh, it says, well, what line of my tax return do I enter Displacer Kitty as a donation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, a, this is a, more of a question for Adam, <laughs> but we can we can talk to this. I guess. Do you want to talk to that one? Sure. So uh, Fury, who is oh, he's asking all, all the questions, yep. uh, asks, uh, was the design of the Idle Champions logo based on the Beholder since both the creature and the player can create their own reality or a happy coincidence? That sounds like a happy coincidence. I think it was a happy yeah. coincidence. Yeah. Both, no. Oh, no, Adam oh, shaking his head. Said, yeah. He's saying no, he, big he brain. Did it, absolutely big brain did it on Adam, purpose. Totally on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Adam says it was completely on purpose. He's got an enormous brain. And uh, and thinks about uh, those kinds of <laughs> things. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the the development of that logo was uh, was was really fun, and we went through it was a, a little tricky because a lot of iterations um, before we. Yeah, but I know that Wizards is very particular about making sure that the number of st that has all ten stocks yes. visible, and we couldn't put like it wasn't a case of like oh we're, they're there but it's behind or in the back or whatever. It, they no, literally they all, all had, had to be, be visible. visible for it to be approved. Yeah, and so I know uh, getting them all in there in a way that was laid out um, and you could see them and, and Adam was happy with the well, the aesthetics of it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, was was definitely um, yeah, it was a process. I think that took that, that took at least two months to get right, and I think. Yeah. I think we like sat on it for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, I think we are nearly out of time. Um, so thank everyone for their questions today. Um, yeah. Uh, and as a reminder, our segment here is just one small part of our 24 hour stream. We're raising money for BC Children's Hospital. Um, you can find ways to uh, contribute in the chat. Uh, also, yeah, please check out our Extra Life page, which is, uh, which is hopefully in the chat there uh, for more details on how you can help. Yep. And next up is going to be a D and D game um, hosted by the infamous Lauren Urban. Wait, is Lauren infamous? Well, listen, I wrote the script. I wrote her as infamous, so she's infamous. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I don't really, we don't really have time to argue with that. Um, but before we go, I also want to pin, wait, am I allowed? Never mind. I'm going to plug my own segment for later tonight where we're going to have mixed reality, head to head, um, multiplayer Beat Saber, where I think, infamous or not, uh, Lauren, along with myself, Mark, and many others of uh, our staff here, are going to play. Um, and show off their Jedi skills. Um, that's going to be at 10 p.m. tonight, um, so don't miss that. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have another nope, story. We don't have time to talk about it. No, no, no. It's tomorrow morning <laughs> uh, nope, at 8 nope, a.m. That's way too early. Nobody no. is going to watch that. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to design a champion uh, live. It's going to be cool. Thanks for watching, everyone.